Uh, this is intended to be a preliminary briefing of the information that we've gathered to this point. It comes from um, our efforts of interviewing witnesses, speaking with the officers, and analyzing uh, evidence that we recovered from the scene. So at this point, we know on Saturday night, the Denver Police Department Communications Center received two calls from two unrelated females reporting that they were being followed and harassed by a male in the Highlands neighborhood. <clears throat> the first call was received at 10.02 p.m. That female was walking in the area of 17th Street and Central Street. She reported uh, she was being followed and harassed. The, she provided a very detailed description of this individual. She went on to relate that the individual produced a firearm and discharged that firearm into the air. Uh, uniformed patrol officers were in the area and immediately began looking to locate the victim while also looking for the subject. Uh, the officers did locate the victim and while talking to her uh, were alerted to a second call that was received by the communication center. That was at, uh, received at 10.17 p.m. The second female reported a similar interaction that she was being harassed and followed by a male. She provided a description that was similar to the first, uh, but did not relate that she saw a gun. This in, uh, incident occurred in the area of the Highlands footbridge that connects downtown to the Highlands neighborhood. <clears throat> the officers were able to locate her uh, and make sure she was safe. Both uh, female callers were cooperative. Uh, with the officers and provided details of their interactions, and they were later interviewed by investigators as part of this case. At approximately 10.30, uh, the, officer was, the area was being saturated by uniformed officers. Uh, several officers began conducting foot patrol in the area. They were proactively uh, providing an increased pre police presence uh, to ensure that no other crimes occurred there, and they were also looking for uh, the subject that had been described based on his actions uh, he was considered a threat and they wanted to contact him. While in the area, an employee of a nearby restaurant pointed out an individual who later was determined to be the subject. Uh, the officers were directed by that restaurant employee to the 1500 block of Central Street. The officers uh, observed and approached the subject without any issue. Uh, the two uniformed officers were there at that point. One was to the north of the individual and one was to the east. They had a brief conversation with him. By all accounts, it was a casual conversation. Uh, we have civilian witnesses and the officers both describing a, a cooperative and casual encounter between the officers and the subject. <clears throat> when asked, the subject did provide his name and birth date without hesitation. This interaction went on for approximately a minute uh, before the officers began conducting a routine warrant check using their police radios. They were out of their car at that point. Uh, suddenly and without warning, the subject retrieved a uh, firearm, a revolver, uh, from his waistband. He began moving towards the officer that was to the east of him uh, and fired at least one round. He discharged at least one round from that weapon at the officer. The officer was uh, within only a few feet of the subject at the time that the round was fired and we're, we're extremely fortunate that that officer was not injured or killed. When that officer recognized that the subject had a handgun, he immediately sought cover uh, from the vehicles that were on the roadway, uh, parked on the roadway. Uh, the other officer who was to the north of the subject immediately engaged him and directed multiple rounds towards him. The subject was struck by these rounds and fell to the ground. Officers immediately called for an ambulance and the subject was transported to Denver Health Medical Center. Uh, that individual is still alive. He's in critical condition with life-threatening injuries. Uh, at the scene in the 1500 block of Central, the officers recovered a revolver. That revolver was capable of holding six rounds. Uh, upon examining the weapon, it appears three of the six rounds had been fired from that weapon at some point. And this revolver was described by both civilians and the involved officers as having been the weapon that the uh, subject fired upon them. In terms of the officers, none of our officers were injured during the exchange of gunfire. The involved officer in this instance, a uniformed patrol officer, he's assigned to District 1, which is Northwest Denver, um, and he has been in no prior police shootings. Uh, the other officer, again, was, uh, that was shot at is a uniformed patrol officer, also assigned to District 1. The subject in this case has been identified as Juan Carlos Macias, M-A-C-I-A-S. His birth date is October 6th of 1981. The investigation of this critical incident is being conducted by the Denver and Aurora Homicide Units, as well as the Denver uh, District Attorney's Office. It's overseen by the Office of the Independent Monitor, which is a civilian entity. 
And we ask anyone with information regarding this incident or uh, additional video that they may have captured to contact the Denver Police Department or Crime Stoppers. And I can answer and address any questions you may have. Um, was the suspect at the time of the interaction, was he under any kind of influence? We haven't been able to determine that. The officers didn't suspect that, um, and I don't have any uh, toxicology results or blood analysis to confirm that. What about the officers? Are they in any... Right now, I'm sorry, yeah, the, uh, the uh, involved officer is on a, a uh, modified duty assignment right now, an administrative assignment. What is that? Um, they, they get reassigned and they go through, um, uh, they're just in a non-line, non-patrol capacity at this point. Not like, okay, but not like on me or anything? No. Okay. You said the uh, suspect, the, the witness said it was one shot fired in the air. Any, any other witnesses talking about the firing? Uh, we did not have any other witnesses to the to the interaction with the female uh, reporting a, a shot was fired there. No, one shot, one shot, one shot at that location. Yes, sir. And you said that there were the, the revolver had the capacity of six, and three were missing. That three, three weren't they weren't missing, but they had been they had there was strike marks and there was no they had been fired. Three rounds had been fired. That same night. I, I can't yes. confirm when they were fired. Did this individual have, have prior arrests? Uh, I don't have that information. Will you be able to provide a picture of this? Uh, so he's still in the hospital. He hasn't been booked. If we can get a hold of a booking photo from a prior uh, interaction, then, then we can uh, provide that. And no one else in the public was, uh, was armed or anything? No officers, not him, and no one else? Not that I'm aware of at this point. Is there anything the officers could have done to be a little bit more aggressive? Search a suspect like that when you know shots have been fired in the area. Do they follow standard police procedure? Sure. So obviously this happened very quickly. They're working to uh, and to kind of evaluate the veracity of the initial complaints. Um, he, going back to the other question of hearing a shot fired, but we only received one call of that, so they're taking that into account. Um, there are other people around. Uh, the subject was initially cooperative with them, um, so they were proceeding as they uh, saw appropriate at that time. And he didn't attempt to run away, he made an aggressive move, you say? That's correct. At no point does he attempt to flee, and in fact, when he pulls the weapon, he goes towards the officer um, that was to his east. Is there a body camera? We do have, the officers were equipped with body cameras, and portions of the interaction are captured by the body camera. Will you be able to release that? Uh, not, not today. It, as soon as the DA's uh, decision letter comes out, they're releasable, certainly. Do you guys have information about the uh, man who's kind of hearing? Today. Yeah. Gene Davis Cisneros, he was, it's a Denver investigation now. Yes, sir, my, my unit's yeah. investigating. Any additional details about that? Um, not, not, not as far as details. We've been working with the Erie Police Department um, since they determined that it was likely connected to a Denver case. Uh, they did a lot of work to get to that point. Uh, but once we recognized that it probably occurred in the 5200 block of steel, we uh, assumed that investigation. Um, basically, all we know right now is there was some interaction there uh, we believe the victim was shot and killed at that location and then transported up to Erie uh, where they um, left him there. And I don't know by what means he was transported or who was involved in that at this point. When the individual was talking to the officer, did he have any reason to why he was in the area or what he was doing? Uh, he did not provide an, an explanation as to what he was doing in the area. They were questioning him about that, but it didn't, he, they didn't provide him a he did not provide them with an explanation. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it.